Good evening, everyone. Welcome to the Park and Recreation Advisory Committee meeting for April the 19th, 2021. We do have a quorum, and I call this meeting to order. First order of business is I need a motion and a second to approve the minutes from the last meeting. I make a motion to approve the minutes from the last meeting. I second. All in favor? Uh -huh. Aye. All opposed? So we'll start right out with movie in the park coming up Friday night. I'm excited. I did look at the weather. It's going to be a little chilly. Everybody needs to bring their uh, blanket, but I think it'll be a nice out there. But David, you're going to have to tell me what is the crudes. I think Jensen told us. I think it's like a modern day Flintstones. Flintstones, modern day age Flintstones. Evidently, the first one was good enough. This is the second one, so it's a sequel to the first. And Kathy may be able to shed more light on that <laughs> as far as what it's all about. <laughs> all I know is what Jensen said last time, that it was a modern-day Flintstone. It's a new release, which is why we chose it, because it was one of the ones that was suggested by the licensed company. So should I even ask, is it animated? Mm -hmm. yes, yes, it is animated. Okay, I like animated. Mm -hmm. And what time does it start? It starts at dark. The gates will open about 7 so that they can start buying concessions. And the dark's around 740-ish, according to the weather. And um, then we'll start at dark. And do you know what kind of concessions? Uh, Senior Center is doing the concessions. They're doing hot dogs, chips, drinks, candy, and popcorn. They... Uh they updated it today, actually, mm -hmm. if I'm not mistaken. I don't, yeah. Was it Park and Rex that yes. put it on there? Yes, we did a menu with our yeah. posts so everybody knows and what they offered. And a price. Okay. And a price. Do I need to go find that and I'll share it as yes, well? Please. Yes, please. Yeah, and they will be accepting card payments. Of course, cash is going to be a whole lot easier for them to handle and process. But um, card availability will be there, but we still would like to stress cash. It just makes things move faster and, neat and smoother. Have we got those particulars worked out with that card thing? Uh, we will um, Friday night. We'll probably try to give them a tutorial between now and then, but Kathy and she will both will be there Friday also. And what he's talking about is uh, we've learned this at the senior meeting. Uh, Everybody here knows but you two. Before we were able to take Carol, would actually have a card reader. We'd use Box 100 sometimes, but now the city's actually implemented its own card deal. It has to be signed in by a city employee and everything. Is, is that a, the short of it? Yes. Yes. Um, and it will be done on a laptop versus like a square on your cell phone. Okay. So um, it, it takes a little longer to process the card payments, which is why David said that. The square, you simply swipe it. With the system we now have, you have to type in information for the card holder and so forth. So it does take a little longer to process. Would it be possible, is there just one window? I was gonna say if there's two, if there's a way to have two lines, um, have someone out there, cash here, card here. Yeah, we could, yeah, and we were, anticipating moving the card payment over to the side so it doesn't affect people who are able to pay cash and stream through quicker but it will be done on a laptop down there so we will have our own little corner just for the card processing okay well uh, i always like it when you go to like ball games and people come through the crowd so maybe we could kind of help them out a little bit through the movie and send some people out i'll be there to help and anybody that's got cash you know, we can do that that way or send them on up to mm -hmm. concession stand. That's what we did um, last year was we had bags of popcorn up and put them in a box and they went through the stand selling popcorn. That's awesome. Which is a dollar a bag. So bring your dollars. <laughs> and the movies in the park is going to be the second Friday of each month, May through August. Do we have, you, do you already have a lineup? Um, we have chosen May's movie, what? which um, May's movie is going to be May 14th, and it is Jumanji the Next Ooh. Level. I like that. Ooh. So yeah. um, we actually chose that one today, but we're not going to advertise it till Monday because I don't want to advertise it and people get confused thinking they're coming this Friday for it. Are you all going to keep that sign up there, David, as you come into the city there by the Exxon? Um, we may keep it up there unless... 
I don't foresee them needing it for anything else. So mm -hmm. that would totally be up to uh, Public Works. It's their sign. They let us borrow it to advertise. Um, if they don't have anything else going on and they don't need it, I don't see why we couldn't keep it there. I think it helps. Yeah. Advertising, of course, you know, is, and everybody that's on, I'm, everybody here is on Facebook, just please share, 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 share. Some people are going to get sick of seeing it, and that's fine. That's the, that's okay. But there's always one or two that, oh, I didn't see it. Yes. I didn't see it. We are hoping we catch them. Um, she was talking about movies in the park. You know, the board let us purchase our own equipment. So this first movie is going to be through a company um, that we had a couple of rain out dates for, so that was already scheduled. The one starting in May is going to be our first attempt at doing it in-house. We may try to do a trial run sometime previous to that one to try to work out any kinks that we may have. And at this point, we're trying to find a movie that the licensing fee is not going to cost us a small fortune just for a trial run. Um, so if we, get, if we get that hammered out and we can figure out which movie it's going to be, we'll let you guys know. That's probably going to be on a Friday, and it'll just be open to the public. But with them knowing a disclaimer that we may have some technical issues. <laughs> yeah. How big is that screen? Huge. It is 17 <laughs> foot tall, 30 foot long. Okay. Yeah. So it's and how does it, how do you get the movie up there? Um, it's a projector and you just pull it back and focus it. Um, we ran it in the shop one day. It's an excellent picture. Is so, it? Uh, we'll, uh, hopefully we'll have it worked out. Is it HD? Time. Yes. It may be, is it 4Ks or whatever? I'm not sure about that. Yeah. It was actually, it was one of the better projectors that was available out there in the package deal. All right. Any questions so far? Not at all. So we'll move to the block party. And I hate to say this, but because I have said that I was going to be in a cornhole tournament and I want to talk to the people at home. Uh, I don't know if I'm going to play or not. I may play left-handed, so I need people to sign up. <laughs> Give everybody a chance. Well, there's some pretty excellent prizes for yeah. first and second, so the winners, first and second place, are going to walk away with some custom-made cornhole boards. Nice. Nice. Um, Is it safe to say you, you have a real partner? I remember we won't mention game. no. We won't mention the last yeah, partner. Game. No, I, I have. So I have. There was a lot of smack talking going on, and it was it. It didn't crazy. end well. No. So I just want to make sure you have a yeah. Real partner. Yeah, I got a good partner. <laughs> I'm gonna hush though because it's budget time. <laughs> <laughs> Any questions about the block party, guys? Do we have um, significant vendors lined up yet? Um, I, I've got, let's see, we have 31 vendors lined up as far as arts, crafts, business, and civic. We have around eight to 10 food vendors that have already registered. I need to um, confirm with a couple of them. So yeah, and we, uh, over the weekend, I think we received three or four more. And I noticed the trend the past few years, people wait till the last minute to sign up. So uh, as we get closer, we'll get a lot more registrations, so. Yeah, David, so uh, this is going to be a nasty question, but I want to know, is there a rain out date? We don't have, we didn't make we a rain out not, date for the no. block party because there's so many people involved yeah. in it. Mm -hmm. um, we got the right DJ down. involved. We've got all of our vendors, food vendors are kind of all committed here. The cornhole tournament, the, the company that's doing that, they're committed to that date. That's one of them things that it's kind of hard to, to make a Kind of like OTF, it's hard to make a rain out day for that. I understand. And then the one that uh, I'm looking forward to, and I know everybody else is, is Farmer's Market. Yep. As of today, we have 34 vendors that have registered. 34? Yes. That's amazing. 34 vendors, folks. I can't say Farmer's Market. Be there every week some have questioned can i come one week and not the other depending on schedule but we have 34 who have registered can you tell us a little bit of a breakdown about uh, um, how many farmers how many uh bear with me 
I don't know what the word I'm looking for. Produce vendors. Yeah. Right and you know the first the first couple of weeks, or maybe even the first month, our produce vendors are not going to be as plentiful because nobody's crops are really right. coming in. And um, except got, strawberries. I don't have strawberries that registered. I only have two produce vendors that have registered. So, um, but we have. I've got somebody who's registered for eggs and some small plants to plant to you know for sale and so forth at the beginning of the season to get others' gardens started. So, and then we've got a couple of food vendors registered. We've got a lot of, everything has to be handmade. So we have some handmade arts and crafts, some handmade like aprons and stuff like that, so. Is the queso lady coming back? Yes, ma'am. She will be that's there. really what I yes. want to know. Is the salsa mom coming yes, back? Yes, ma'am. Yes. That queso is back. good for yeah. sure. Her salsa is good. Have you been to our farmer's market, Giles? Yeah. Oh, yeah. It's good. Yeah, it is. <laughs> yeah. Um, yeah. Also, you know, I'm sorry. Green. No, go ahead. Um, Sheila has been, been doing spotlights on our vendors on the farmer's market page. So we're asking each vendor that registers to give us a bio and links to their web pages and Facebook. That way we can spotlight them to let the public know who will be there to help bring in the foot traffic. I've seen a few, a few of them, mm -hmm. but I wasn't sure if I saw the queso lady. Or yeah, she was at the beginning. She was one of the first ones. Both my uh, queso and salsa ladies both gave their bios at the beginning of this, the startup of registering. And it is my understanding that the seniors will be there as well yes. this year. Yes, they will. And what are they making, same as last year? They, yes, the, the baked goods, the banana pudding, and so forth. Okay. So, mm -hmm. so every Saturday you <clears throat> know where y'all will find me. <laughs> <laughs> That'll be good. I know Carol will be there. She's always uh, there. Rick will be there off and on, make it, bringing his world famous homemade Rick cookies. Thank you, Walmart. Uh, <laughs> they were not. They were. I'm glad, you, I'm glad you said that about <laughs> Sheila because I wanted to comment. I always like to praise people, and she seems like she's jumped right in. And mm -hmm. Yes, she is. My favorite all the spotlight. saying. <laughs> It's taking the bull by the horns and you know I like that and your emails are up to date and uh, I, you know I work during the day quite a bit so I don't get all your emails on time and I apologize for that uh, July 4th celebration um, I think the gates should open at 5 or 530 you band usually goes on at 6 or they, they're scheduled for 6 6 yes um, Mixtape, it's an 80s tribute band. Um, the board approved that contract this past reading. Um, fireworks through pyro shows. So we're hopefully the weather will cooperate the last several years. It's uh, been kind of wet, but we're looking for a good turnout. Always a fun time. We may, give a, we may have a few door prizes to give away this year. We haven't done that in the past. Um, but we may, people take tickets at, at the gate and, uh, we raffle off a, uh, couple of door prizes. Any questions about that guys? And of course, old timers festival, that seems like it just, we start sitting here talking about it and the next thing you know, it's here and. Yep, I'll let Kathy have that one because she and, uh, between her and Sheila, they are the ones pretty much handling all the details on that one. I mean, right now, uh, we've uh, booked the Friday, Saturday night entertainment. Uh, we've not booked the Saturday entertainment yet. Uh, we've gotten the Pony Pals, which is the petting zoo. We've uh, got them to come back this year, the animal show. He's already committed to come back with us this year. Um, we're reaching out to a few uh, new, the axe throwing. I don't know how well that'll go. But we've reached out to maybe add axe throwing to the event. Um, I've reached out to a couple hot air balloons for tether rides. I, I reached out. I haven't been told no yet. I understand. So, I think uh, he was laughing about the axe throwing. Because well, I know. <laughs> it gets been on, on skates. So, um, <laughs> on skates. We're trying to add a few more uh, different options this year to, to change it up a little. So, uh, food, we're changed in the layout a little to make it a little easier if we do have beer sales maybe have the food garden near the beer sales to make it flow better so that's um, a good idea yeah we'll talk uh <clears throat> we will definitely talk extensively about that uh in a few months 
because I'm sure it's going to grow and get bigger and you guys are going to work even more on it even than you are now. So, so are we not having a carnival with it this year? We are not. I reached out to several carnivals and it was either they were not going to be in our area at that time or they still were not going um, because of COVID. Okay. So we ended up, because of not getting any positive response, we had to go ahead and start planning without it. Kathy, David, is it possible to just, is there, is there anybody out there that you know of that just has like three or four kitty rides? I mean, let's, um, let's be realistic. Old, old Timers Festival is uh, for, a, for a two, three, four year old other than a petting zoo, maybe a jump house or something. Well, we were going to bring inflatables. Yeah. Um, that we were gonna bring those back this year. I didn't know if anybody owned just like three or four of the kitty rides, just just kid rides, you know. Or Not if we that have I enough know. room we could consider maybe a hay ride. I don't know, depending on how many vendors and right. things that we get, but Right. Um Jason had um given me a contact for horseback, like maybe horse rides that were not the, the pony ride, maybe for older, but I've not heard back from them yet. Or so. do we know anyone that has, um, I've been to a couple of places where they have like the, and it's, it's really for the little kids, like train rides, like on a little that's, track. That's what I'm talking about. Just yeah. like they got those little things that go around that's shaped like an elephant and stuff. Carousels. And a little roller coaster, just, just for kids. So I, I can try to find just some smaller ones. Um, yeah. I don't, I was going with the bigger carnivals. We were gearing towards the smaller kids with the carnivals that we reached out to, but see maybe if some local places have just the smaller mm -hmm. options. It's really hard to, it's really hard to surface every age group. Mm -hmm. It's just almost impossible. Uh, but, <clears throat> and I guess being, I've got a, grandson that would love to, to ride those things, I would think that kids would. We may be able to find I train think, rides. I think he came, you know, we had one that came about five years ago, maybe it was the last time he was here, and he used a trail for the train rides. Mm -hmm. um, I, know, I don't know where they're located, but I know um, like a couple of the big churches in Murfreesboro use them around the holiday time and some festival times. So they don't, they're not bringing out a whole carnival, but they are bringing out the train rides. So we can check into that. My, uh, my ideology is that if you've got, if you get three or four or whatever, those little kitty rides, the parents will be more apt to, to bring the children just for that. And while they're there, utilize the rest of the festival, kind of as a, you know. Mm -hmm. But we will, when, we, when that gets closer, we'll talk about it. So the drive through Easter egg hunt, I'm going to talk about this and brag about it because that was probably out of all of the events that's been going on in this city for as long as I've been here, that was the best, <laughs> smoothest operation. Everybody was happy. The traffic flowed. The Easter Bunny was great. Uh, all of the workers, Rick, Laura, Carol, uh, Giles, everybody that came out and helped, uh, it just, it, it, it was almost like clockwork. I uh, didn't get to stay for the, the full time. I had an appointment, but um, I did talk to David afterward and I asked him, could we do this every year? <laughs> well, that's kind of why it's on there as a discussion item for a recap of what happened and moving forward, if that's something we'd like to pursue in the future. I liked it because every kid, nobody left empty handed. Yeah. So many times we've done that in the past where kids come up and one kid will have 40 or 50 eggs and then several kids will have none. Um, and this, this, I think this made it fair for everybody because you don't have the parents jockeying for a position either, mm -hmm. trying to guide their kids to where the and golden egg is. don't have to be is. a human barricade. That's yeah. the best part of yeah, it. You <laughs> You guys outdid yourself on that. Miss Donna from the library, man, that woman put on a show. <laughs> Best Easter Bunny I've seen since I've been around. Uh, yes. That person did a great job, was excited about it, and uh, everybody in this boardroom tonight was there and helped. And, uh, 
episode. Did we ever get that last golden egg winner? No. No? No. Aww. The basket's still sitting up at the office. Is that, uh, you know, is, so did they have to take each one of those eggs and open them up and then there was something in it? Yes. Um, there were four golden eggs. So inside the golden egg was a set of instructions on how to claim that prize. And they, would, they had to bring that up to the office to get the basket. But you do know what age group is Yes, missing. the six to eight-year-old is the one that has not been claimed. The six to eight-year-old. Yes. So we need to talk about that here just for a second, and then we need to put that out on social media. That if they you, did. Yeah. Uh, I put it last week. I need to refresh it, but we did not get any calls on it. And it's obvious. It's an obvious if you get the golden egg. It's, it's obvious, obvious, yes. It, it might be just where a child got it and there was, there was a piece of paper in it and just threw it aside before the parent was able to look in the bag. So, um, yeah, it was obvious who received the, the prize. So, uh, we need a timeline and somehow to get rid of that thing and give it to somebody in need. Right. Yeah, because it's, it's got nice stuff in that basket. <laughs> yeah, that's what I mean. So we need to... Well, I'm thinking if we don't get any takers by the block party or one of the movies in the park, mm -hmm. do a raffle some sort, maybe? For people that are already there. Yes. <laughs> like when they come in Could and you maybe... You have it? to be present to claim your and prize. And maybe before the movie starts. Could you open it up and put it in a different package of some sort? We could. There's about uh, five different things in there five separate things yeah. that could be I'm not on. trying to take out the six or eight year old so don't nobody think that <laughs> I'm just trying to you know if you got if we got something like that then uh, yeah I think if they haven't claimed it by now it's probably like you right. said it just got thrown away mm -hmm. or whatever yeah. so that we can make some more kids happy right as they're coming to the movies yeah so this next item is not on the agenda but we're all going to turn our heads except for Rick this way, and Mr. Perry there is going to tell us about some exciting news with softball. <clears throat> Excuse me. Um, I've been working diligently to develop a, a program for softball. I've gotten um, tremendous word of mouth interest. I have, if we were going to start a day, I know it's underfunded, but at least I, we got a half a league of people who are interested right today. So what's holding, it's not necessarily holding, what's hindering us from actually moving further and, and pushing is actually knowing when the fields be ready and the time frame as when to start soliciting the public for to join the league. So um, in my correspondence and talking to people, I've been saying maybe for a fall league, but you know, that's no in the air nothing in stone so if we're looking from august to october i, I can have it and uh, i have a phone call today after this meeting with a lady who helps um, who has 18 teams available in the area who are willing to at least nice. bring 10 to us for the league so plus the plus the east and the people that i sp spoke of earlier they're they're two different entities so they're not even together so we can at least get i know we can have 10 teams for sure I think, David, uh, realistically, a couple of days, you have that field. We'd have to get some dirt in there. I think, yeah, Fall League is very doable. I think we need to get with uh, city administration and see if the organization running it is required to be a nonprofit. That may, that may hold things up if they are required to be a nonprofit. I don't have that answer. Um, that would have to come from city admin. We've been there, done that. Yeah, yeah, I mean, it's real. Yeah, we could have the field up and going by the fall, no problem. Okay. Would that be a co-ed league and a men's league? or This will uh, – how been – advertising has been strictly co-ed. Um, I like okay. that. I, starting out, starting out, if it, uh, if it blows up a little bit, then – but <clears throat> I don't know if you know how much he's talking about the nonprofit stuff, but uh, – that was a big issue back a few years ago. And uh, I don't, you'd have to, but like he said, he could talk to the administration part about that. 
It's not a big deal to get anymore. But no, it's to get it is not a big deal, but to get people that will put their name on the dotted line uh, is a can be. But I'm just thinking, being a one of our board members is ideal about this, and I don't I don't think. This, well, I mean, the city ran baseball one time, no bigger than softball would be. Seems like we might be able to pull that off as a city until it's up and running or something. I don't know. Yeah, that would be something we'd have to look into because right now we don't have the personnel to be down here at night. If the city were to run it, we'd, we'd want a presence at all times during all games. Um, and the city runs it, then, you know, Everybody basically becomes a subcontractor of the city. Your umpires become a, a subcontractor, so they get paid through finance. Um, so that would be another thing. Ideally, probably a nonprofit. Does it have to be a nonprofit? Strictly, I, I'm not aware of that. I don't know. Um, yeah, that's a good point. Um, you know, I think David, if, I was I was involved in the league back then when the city was running it, and. Uh, it didn't actually have a city presence there all the time, but what what we had was we had a board similar to this one that just was for baseball, and board members from that would always be there. Uh, some somebody would you know be there to be responsible for everything to the city. Yeah, and I think when we when the city took it over. Hmm. Four or five years ago, I think that's how it was set up. Also, yeah, well, and they set up a board. We did in fifteen sixteen. We had a board set, but then we had um, it had to be a city employee uh, present during the games as well, and we had to have one in each concession stand because we had baseball and softball both going. But um, we did have a board of about ten people that did help us, but a city employee had to be there anyway. And, and you're talking about this back here. You know, you're going. You're using one field as opposed to eight. So the scale of this is going to be considerably smaller than it was up there at the park. Exactly. Um, and the lady you're, you're talking to, she may have a nonprofit, or she may know somebody that'd be interested. Like I say, I'm not 100% sure if it has to be a nonprofit, or I don't know if I think the sticker was before an organization we thought was nonprofit. Their paperwork didn't match the nonprofit status. So I don't know if. Your for-profit organization, if that makes a difference, as long as your paperwork says what your goal is, yeah, your for-profit organization. That's some stuff we'll have to look into and see. But it wouldn't take long to get um, get the field in shape back there. Okay. And, you know, because at one time, and I know Steve and I have talked about this, and, and it's been a while, and we're probably aging ourselves, but 20 years ago when that field was in motion every night, it was the best place to be around here. We were turning teams down because everybody wanted in this league here. Okay. Okay. You know, you had yeah, your, a big Stone, demand your Ingrams, your <clears throat> co-ops. All of them had men's teams and co and co-ed teams that were putting in here. When do I get my female flag football game on the agenda? Well, I thought that was going. We thought that was going through the senior center. <laughs> oh, somebody else was helping you with that, wasn't they? I don't know. I just, Who said, I thought maybe that was Giles that was going to help you with the flag football. <laughs> I'm willing. Let's go. <laughs> All right. Uh, Giles, uh, we, we appreciate you doing what you're trying to do. And uh, as a new board member, of course, you and Rick and Laura, guys coming out, helping us out showing up, working with us. And then before we go into comments, last but not least, uh, I'm going to turn it over to David. <clears throat> and David is going to explain to us why we're not wearing shirts that match. <laughs> it's not that we cannot get shirts. We can get... Um, I don't know about the polos. Every board in the city does not have, they don't, they're not provided shirts. So we can get you guys shirts. It's probably gonna be more of a t-shirt and it's probably gonna say, it may say Parks and Rec or and volunteer on the back. Something similar to that. It's not that we don't want you guys to have them. We want you to have them. We think it 
when you guys come out to events, we want people to know who you are. Um, I think my, our hands may be tied a little bit on that because what you do for one board, then you're going to have to do across the board for everybody. Well, if we <clears throat> offered to pay for them, then it would be up to the other boards if they wanted to do that or not. And not the city paying for it, but we as volunteers offer to pay. Yeah. And, you know, we, we can't tell you not to pay for them. If that's something you guys as a board want to take upon yourselves, then we're, we're not going to sit here and say, no, you can't do that okay. because it's, it's your money. <clears throat> so we will find someone to make shirts. We happen to know a few people. Mm -hmm. And we'll just have to come up with our own what we want on them. Works for me. Oh, I'm good with that. Problem solved. <clears throat> now, uh, but like I said, if you want volunteer shirts, we can, we can do that, you know, through our department. But then every other board. Well, that, I don't... They don't I'm have, also on green you guys have a presence, you know, but you, you guys come out to park events. The Greenway really doesn't have any events where we yeah, say, we're going well, that's true the there. And I think Stormwater does have volunteer shirts they give out there. So, I mean, it's something we can explore and whichever route you guys want to go, we want to try to facilitate that because your presence is there like the Easter egg hunt. We want people to know who y'all are, that you're giving up your own time. So, Sheila, <clears throat> sounds like to me you've got everybody's sizes. You probably need to send out an email, and we won't discuss it here because I've been through this at the other board meeting I chair. <laughs> We're not going to get into it. Everybody will email you a color. The color was part of the first. They did. They went, and I put it all on a spreadsheet. But yeah, like I said, we're not going to talk about that here. <laughs> <laughs> Isn't it orange? It definitely was not orange. I don't think so. <laughs> it should be. I know. I be, as long as it had a little white in there. And yeah, we'll talk about it. Later. What you need to do is <laughs> is maybe do you want what you. What we want on it, we want park and rec member, volunteer, and we're going to pay for them. But we need a mediator, and Sheila, you would help us, I'm sure. And uh, after you get all your replies back, then you let me know, and then. And Steve's going to write a check for all of us. <laughs> <laughs> I can do that. No, no, I don't mind. Then you'll be obligated. I'm exactly. thinking. Exactly. No, I I'm take thinking that back. Cornbread. Well, I All right. You let me so, know when you want some cornbread. So. Anyway, good meeting, guys. Before we get to going here, the next board meeting will be May the seventeenth, right here at six p.m. Mr. Rick Autry, we'll start out with you, sir. Any questions, current comments, concerns? This month, I think I'm good to go. All right, Mr. Perry. No, not at all. I'm good. Ain't no sense to even ask. Go ahead. <laughs> See, why you want to sit next to him? <laughs> I think uh, I'm very appreciative to be back on this board, and I appreciate all the hard work that everybody is putting in, either at the events or behind the scenes. I know um, y'all are doing an excellent job every day putting the events out there letting the public know i really like the vendor spotlights on there i only got to see a couple of them but i, I really like that idea and i appreciate everything that y'all are doing for the citizens in this community thank you miss carol um just kudos once again on the easter egg the drive through easter egg hunt it was it was awesome and we were directing the traffic in and everybody lined up. It was very organized and everybody was excited. Even before they got up to the Easter Bunny, kids were wa waving and everybody was saying Happy Easter. And I mean, and it was it was just great. So I, I do second, third, fourth, whatever, continuing that in the future. And um, 
and I once, like I said last last month, I'm just excited that everybody's participating and volunteering and helping out, and just the support within the community is just, I mean, it's just awesome too, so. Summertime's coming, you guys are gonna be busy. You already know that, so I always, applaud you for the great work you're doing kathy seems like she's got some good help folks watching at home we agreed that because we are six foot distancing that we are not wearing masks tonight so that way you don't have to ask about that uh, i'm so happy that you guys are coming out and helping uh, i love board participation at these things even if you can't come out and stay for the whole event i know sometimes i can't sometimes i can't make it but at least coming out is a big plus. So with that being said, I call this meeting adjourned.